back in 2017, the Vegas Golden Knights would pull a miracle as they would assemble the most successful expansion team in NHL history. In fact, it's not even close because with a 48-21-7 record, they blew every other team out of the water. The second best expansion team in history had a negative record as the 1993 Florida Panthers would end with a 33-34-17 record. And like I just did, this was the second best record. And it's only really down from here. I mean, the Ottawa Senators, and, and get this, had a 10-70-4 record. That is so brutal. And honestly, I have no clue how fans could even sit through these games. I know it's an exciting new team, but goddamn. And on a side note, I did look into it, and 9 out of those 10 wins were at home, so I guess that's okay, but you get the point. Expansion teams are usually terrible, and the Vegas expansion was a massive success story. So the question is, will Seattle Kraken come close? Seems hard to believe, but I mean, with a stagnated salary cap and many other contract complications, even if teams know better, it is very possible that the Kraken can replicate some of that success. As cash strapped teams may see some more benefits from letting go of those big guns as it will provide more cap relief. But I would love to hear your opinion down below as these videos also serve as the annual roast of me, RTH, because I am surely going to get torn apart in the comments down below, so go at me. And if you enjoyed the videos, make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. Alright, so before we do anything, let's clarify the expansion rules. Every NHL team has two options. Option one, teams can protect seven forwards, three defensemen, and one goalie. Or option two, eight skaters total and one goalie. And I know what most of you may be thinking, well, that's easy, I'll protect more players. Except, this can also really bite you in the butt. Because what if you have eight great forwards and only two defensemen worth protecting? Well, even though you're protecting more players, it just may not make sense. Because this pivotal decision was exposed many times during the Vegas expansion draft, specifically the Shea Theodore situation. So with that being said, every team just really has to ensure they're making the right decision. The Anaheim Ducks, and I'm going to choose Sonny Milano, but we also have guys like Sam Steele and Hayden Fleury. Now, they could probably go a couple directions in terms of protection, but almost more than any other team, it could also blow up in their faces. <coughs> Shay Theodore. But I'd have to imagine it would be one of either Sam Steele, Milano, or Hayden Fleury, all highly touted prospects at one point who have yet to break out. But I'll go with Sonny Milano, an extremely talented, skilled winger who has top six potential, and if not, he can be that bottom six supplementary scoring piece. Arizona Coyotes, Aiden Hill. Psych! As I was editing this video, Aiden Hill would be strategically traded. Not a bad play at all, but for the sake of simplicity and the fact that Arizona doesn't have a lot to offer here, let's go with Ranta. And considering how much potential elite goalies are up for grabs, they might be able to do something special here in the goal crease. Boston Bruins. Even though the Bees are a deep team, somehow, and I honestly don't get it, they don't have much to lose. I mean, we do have players like Andre Kasha. Also, don't kill me in that pronunciation, I'm struggling here but he could be a 2025 goal scorer if he can bounce back. They have a couple younger defensemen, and interestingly, they also have DeBrusque, which I don't think makes any sense, so I'm gonna go with Trent Frederick, a feisty first round pick from 2016. He had a pretty brutal season last year offensively, but he was in a bottom six role with limited opportunity and played a respectable defensive game. And considering that he's only 23 and still has room to grow offensively, at a minimum, he can be a good bottom six defensive minded, you know, sandpaper player. Buffalo Sabres. And I feel like it has to come down to either Middlestat, which I kind of doubt now, and Tage Thompson and Rasmus Asplund. But Tage Thompson is a very intriguing player. He's young, has shown offensive upside at the professional level, and is six foot seven. So with that rationale, I will go with Asplund. Which also may be very risky, as he is also only 23 and put up 7 goals in 28 games last year with 0, nada, power play minutes, and he was a stud in Sweden. Calgary Flames, Chris Tanov. Now, I feel like it's gotta be either Oliver Shillington or Chris Tanov, and I'm obviously a bit biased here because it would be very interesting to see Chris Tanov leading the Kraken against the Canucks. But it also probably makes more sense as he's a reliable veteran present, you know, right hand shot on a decent contract who can play in any role besides the power play and eats pucks for breakfast. Carolina Hurricanes. And for this one, I think it would probably have to be between someone like Jake Gardner or perhaps Jake Bean. 
So with that being said, I would probably assume the Canes want to unload that cap and go with Gardiner. Now with that being said, I also think that Carolina would have to give in a sweetener, so maybe a draft pick or prospect, which wouldn't be horrible if he can get back to his game, as he was healthy scratched on numerous occasions last season. But with that being said, Gardner over the past has served as a decent power play option and a pretty reliable top four defenseman. The Chicago Blackhawks, Riley Stillman, a 23 year old defenseman who doesn't have a lot of experience, but in the games he has played, he has put up solid analytics. Colorado Avalanche, Tyson Jost. So a lot of people are leaning towards someone like Nachuskin or Donskoy, but the Avs are definitely in that win now mode. And it would be foolish to give away someone like, you know, Donskoy, Nachuskin, specifically Nachuskin, who plays an extremely reliable defensive game, if not just underrated shutdown role in the bottom six. And don't get me wrong, Jost does have some good upside here, and Colorado as a team has enough skill guys up front and they probably wouldn't suffer too much from giving him away. Columbus Blue Jackets in, of course, rest in peace Matisse, you will be missed. But I'm gonna go with Kevin Stenlin, slim pickings in Columbus, but they do have some intriguing higher prospects entering the league like Kevin Stenlin. Dallas Stars, Ben Bishop. If Seattle is able to land a tandem of, you know, Ranta, Ben Bishop and Chris Dreger, which honestly wouldn't be too surprising, they might have one of the best goal creases in the league. Especially with a guy like Chris Dreger, who hasn't even fully even showed what he's capable of, the Kraken are going to have some great options to build just a crazy goalie core. Detroit Red Wings, Troy Stature, Slim Pickens and Motown and a bias for sure, but let's add to this, you know, Pacific Coast rivalry and add another BC boy who played for the Nucks. Edmonton Oilers, Tyler Benson, high end prospect from 2015 or 2016 here there's already some existing rumblings that he's upset with his limited opportunity in edmonton he's still only 23 and has been dominating the minors kind of a wild card here but very intriguing florida panthers chris reacher and again pending ufa but it does look like he's willing to sign here so seattle might have a very solid crease which is a great place to start la kings not many options here but i'm gonna go with brendan lemieux Another chippy bottom six player who can add that, you know, consistent sandpaper grit to the roster. Minnesota Wild, Carson Soucy. A six foot five defenseman who can serve as a solid top six option with some upside. Montreal Canadiens, Ben Sherratt. To be honest, I don't have much to say here. Top six option, but Ben Sherratt. Nashville Predators, and this one's interesting. The curse of Matt Duchesne. You know, they have a chance to lift the curse of Matt Duchesne. Will they do it? No, seriously though, with Duchesne's, you know, I guess just just weird coincidence of tanking teams as soon as he enters the team. He has a massive contract and dwindling offense. This may be the best choice for the Preds who have been stuck in kind of me mediocrity in their offense. So I say tear it down, figure it out, unload Matt Duchesne hopefully, because on the flip side for Seattle, Duchesne was a consistent offensive guy his whole career and has been struggling in Nashville and still has that potential to be that 2A, you know, 1B type center who can lead her offense and be a 60 point guy. New Jersey Devils, BK Subban. Now, there would have to be some type of sweetener and something like that for PK's contract as it is not pretty. But in terms of getting a personality to help kickstart your franchise, PK would be ideal. Hate him or love him. His game has been trending upwards, not at that price tag, but for a new franchise, it is feasible. New York Islanders, Kiefer Bellows. A highly touted first rounder in 2016. Now, his development definitely stagnated for a couple years there, but he has been uprising as of recently and could still be a top six winger. New York Rangers, Colin Blackwell. Not many great options here, but he does project as a bottom six option. Ottawa Senators, Chris Tierney. A great third line center option, and again, not many great pickings here. Philadelphia Flyers. Now, originally I had Nolan Patrick, and I think they thought that too, as they would unload him for Ryan Ellis. Excuse me? Not bad. And then Nashville would flip him for Cody Glass. Kind of a crazy and fun thing. So with that being said, let's go with Scott Lawton, another bottom six piece who's been reliable in that role. He also plays with grit and can help center depth. Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, Jason Zucker has not been a great fit Pittsburgh, as he was a consistent 20-25 goal scorer in the past, and I do believe he can get back to that 20 goal form. However, with the 5.5 million AAV, the Penguins could use that cap relief in the crack and could receive another potential 25 goal guy for the top six. San Jose Sharks, Ryan Donato. He's been bouncing around as of recently, but he does possess that good offensive potential. 
He showed flashes with Boston and with Minnesota, and maybe he could use this opportunity, to, you know, to re reinvent his career and bounce back. St. Louis Blues, Vince Dunn or Vladimir Tarasenko? God damn. Now, considering that Vince Dunn is extremely underrated, as he does have, in my opinion, at least good top four, even maybe top two upside, as he was even low key instrumental to the St. Louis Blues on their cup run. So with that being said, I could see them protecting Dunn over Tarasenko, especially that it was just announced that they are leaving Vladimir unprotected. Which would be great for Seattle as they could potentially get a 30 goal first line winger. Insane and you just really couldn't go wrong either way. Tampa Bay Lightning, Tyler Johnson, a name we don't hear as often these days, probably because he's buried under 18 other stars and 18, 18 million over the salary cap, but Johnson could still be a 60 point player. I think Tampa would have to sweeten this deal a bit because of his cap and because Tampa is in a bad cap situation and needs that relief, but he is a Washington native and could get back to his top six form with more minutes. Toronto, Justin Hall, a right shot defenseman with some upside. Now, Toronto does need some cap relief, so maybe they do try to change the deal here, maybe include some draft picks or something. Maybe they try to entice them to pick up someone like Kerfoot, or sorry, Kerfoot. But as it stands right now, I think the best fit would be Justin Hall. Vancouver Canucks, Louis Erickson. Hey, and, and get this, a previous 30 goal scorer. Wait, nearly a five time 30 goal scorer. This guy can put pucks in the net and would serve as their elite first line winger. Washington Capitals, Vitek Vanacek, an up and coming goalie who's been developing well, as he showed well in his first appearances last season, it can kind of help fill that transition role with the minors and the backup option. Winnipeg Jets, Logan Stanley, a six foot seven defenseman who hasn't been developing too fast, but Winnipeg already has a shaky back end and can't afford to lose anybody else. But that being said, with his grit, his tenacity, Stanley does definitely have a unique game that could be seen as very valuable if utilized correctly. But anyways, here is the final roster. Honestly guys, not bad. If PK Subban can be more consistent, if they actually can lock down a goalie core like this on top of having a but you know healthy 30-40 goal guy in Tarasenko, they could be a legit defensive team keeping pucks out of their net with some offensive upside. Now they do need some it's they're missing obviously a star front, which will come, but not bad. Especially if we see a couple, you know, wildcard players do anything remotely similar to a William Carlson or like a Riley Smith, Jonathan Marcheseau. So what did I say to trigger you? Comment down below. Tell me why I'm wrong. I'm ready for the roast. But for real, I'd actually love to hear some of your expansion thoughts. So definitely let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the videos, make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. And as always, thanks for watching.